I'm sure that if you've ever done intermittent fasting, then you might have thought, Did I mess up my fast? Did I screw things up completely? Did I fuck up now? Well, in this video, I'm gonna help you with that, and I'm gonna tell you the eight things that mess up intermittent fasting. Completely mess up your fasting window, so it's wasted. And you blow it! Number one, fasting causes you too much stress. Fasting is a physiological stressor that causes catabolism and cellular turnover in your body. It means you'll be breaking down energy molecules from fat and glycogen to create energy, not necessarily muscle tissue. Cortisol is the main stress hormone that's gonna help you with mobilizing the body's energy stores, like fat and glycogen. The problem is that you may potentially become excessively catabolic by getting kicked out of ketosis, breaking a fast state, stopping autophagy, or simply being too stressed out. That's why you don't want to be overstimulating cortisol while you're fasting, because it may lead to muscle loss. You know that skinny fat look with, you know, tiny arms and a lot of belly fat around your stomach? That's cortisol, that's excess cortisol. It's important to protect the thyroid as well. The thyroid gland regulates your metabolism and it's very sensitive to stress signals and as soon as your body detects too many glucocorticoids in the blood, it's gonna try to protect the thyroid by lowering your metabolism and other hormones. To prevent that from happening, you have to make your fasting low stress and less stimulating. Dehydration at electrolyte deficiencies can add an additional stressor to your body, which is why it's a good idea to be drinking salted or mineral water during the fast. Not being stressed out or anxious is also important because you can literally release more cortisol by simply thinking negative thoughts, worrying about future events or feeling anxiety. Practices like meditation, mindful breathing and foam rolling will increase your general ability to deal with stress. It was at this moment that Nathan knew. He fucked up. Number two, that's also one of the reasons why you have to be more careful with drinking too much coffee. Coffee is a stimulant that releases cortisol and adrenaline as well. It puts you into that energized state of mind, but it happens at the expense of your adrenal glands. That's why drinking too much coffee or drinking too strong coffee may also make you catabolic by overstimulating cortisol. If you feel tired after drinking coffee, you get anxious, you feel the jitters or you go into tunnel vision, then you probably overdid it. Coffee has some health benefits and it can actually boost the effectiveness of the fast by promoting fat mobilization, autophagy and insulin sensitivity, but only in small amounts. You should also time restrict your caffeine intake, like you do with intermittent fasting and consume it only within a certain time frame, so that you wouldn't drink too much. Drinking coffee first thing in the morning isn't ideal for your hormones and circadian rhythm either. Cortisol is highest in the morning and it's supposed to wake you up. If you add a cup of coffee on top of that, then you're gonna shoot cortisol through the roof and you'll also make you more desensitized towards caffeine which makes you more dependent of more caffeine to feel energized again. You shouldn't drink coffee within a few hours after waking up to allow your body to increase its natural cortisol production. In total, you'd want to stick to one to three cups of coffee a day and avoid caffeine in the afternoon. Number three, when you drink your coffee, you shouldn't add any milk or cream or anything like that either, because it is gonna break the fast. If you're fasting for simply fat loss and ketosis, then adding a little bit of cream, butter or MCT oil won't interfere with that. If you're fasting for cellular autophagy and longevity, then any significant amount of calorie will stop the fast. One cup of coffee itself has like five calories or so, and anything higher than 20 calories begins to interfere with autophagy. Fasting definitely has several layers and depths to it. You're still gonna experience mild autophagy if you eat maybe like 100 calories of pure fat to 100%. It's gonna keep you in ketosis, keeps your blood sugar low, it's not gonna affect your liver glycogen, which itself is going to allow autophagy to kick in in small amounts. So it's not this flip on, flip off switch that where you're completely out of autophagy when you break a fast. However, it's still true that the strict fasting state will always be more effective in terms of autophagy. Whatever the case may be, you don't want to be adding regular milk to your coffee anyway. You can get away with adding a little bit of MCT oil or butter to your coffee, but milk is very anabolic. Milk is gonna stop the fastest state much faster than other keto fats because it has higher growth factors like IGF-1 and mTOR which are purely anti-fasting and anti-autophagy. So the bulletproof coffee style is definitely a better option than having cream. For five long dark years, 
I quit drinking coffee. The same applies to artificial sweeteners. First of all, they're not actually zero calories. The labels say they're zero calories, so you could be tricked into buying them, but in reality, all non-caloric sweeteners have a smaller number of calories. Secondly, they may rise blood sugar and insulin, which will break both ketosis and autophagy, leading to more catabolism. Third, they can also trigger cravings and hunger signals by stimulating gut receptors. You're gonna tell your bacteria that there's something sweet in your mouth, which would entail food, but in reality, it's all a hoax. This may disrupt the microbiome and make you hungrier than you were before. There's also the problem that artificial sweeteners create these bacteria that are very good at extracting calories from sugars, carbohydrates and everything else as well. So if you're consuming a lot of artificial sweeteners, then you're literally teaching your body to absorb more calories from whatever you eat. Number five, taking supplements can also mess up your fasting. Most supplements have calories and some ingredients may actually spike blood sugar. Of course, supplements are gonna break fast because most of the supplements are simply food inside a pill. So why would you think that there's any different while you're fasting? Secondly, your body's ability to absorb the nutrients from supplements will also be greatly reduced while you're fasting. Most of the ingredients are fat soluble anyway, which requires the presence of other foods. So you will always be better off by combining your supplements with real food. The best thing about it is that short periods of micronutrient deficiencies are actually beneficial in the body in the long term. They make your body more sensitive to those nutrients again. If you're constantly taking in a lot of supplements and eating frequently, then your body eventually decreases its rate to absorb them because of not feeling the necessity for it. Whatever the case may be, you don't need to be taking any supplements while fasting and you're actually better off by avoiding them. Especially if you're fasting like 16 to 20 hours. That's such a small time frame that you won't even become deficient. You're still digesting the food that you ate from the last night, so you don't need no supplements. And the same applies to longer fasts. If you fast for like a week or something, even then you don't need any supplements. Wasted. Number six, not fasting long enough. All the real benefits of fasting happen if you fast for at least 20 hours and even more. That's where you only start to trigger stem cell growth and autophagy. If you're trying to lose fat, then it doesn't really matter how long you fast, as long as you stay at a caloric deficit for the entire day. However, caloric restriction and eating less doesn't necessarily give you the health benefits of fasting. In fact, breaking the fast with eating a little bit of calories may make you more catabolic and lower your thyroid functioning, more so than fasting because you're gonna break the fastest state. But because you're not giving your body adequate nutrients, you may go into a semi-starvation mode. Starving. If you break your fast with like 100 calories at 16 hours, then your body is going to still want to get some nutrients, but those 100 calories aren't enough. So where does it turn next? It's gonna go catabolic. That's why I would suggest that it's better for your health as well as performance to fast a little bit longer and break the fast with more food rather than fast shorter, break the fast with less food and continue to fast. It was at this moment Regina knew. She fucked up. Number seven, fasting for too long, too often. But we still have to remember that fasting is a physiological stressor. To gain the hormetic effects of fasting, you have to make sure you're not overdoing it beyond your body's ability to handle it. If all you do is fast all the time, then it's inevitably gonna limit your ability to do other things related to improving your health and fitness. Fasting for too long, too often, all the time, will also make your body more efficient with its metabolic processes, which is another way of saying that you're gonna slow down your metabolism. To prevent that, you have to include some variation in your fasting schedule and have periods where you're eating more frequently. You definitely don't have to be eating three meals a day, and you do definitely want to be fasting the majority of the day, but extending your eating window by a few hours on some days is a good idea. Instead of a two-hour meal, you eat within 4 hours, or 6 hours, or 8 hours, whatever suits your situation. The last thing that messes up your fast is combining a lot of caloric restriction with intermittent fasting. This is another one of those things that is going to decrease your metabolism even more. If you're eating in a smaller time frame, then it's more difficult to be getting all of your calories and macros in. This may make you subconsciously eat less, and you're gonna feel less hunger. It's great for fat loss, but caloric restriction for too long can actually have a downturn effect on longevity. 
That's why you have to combine fasting with getting enough calories from your feeding window. If you're trying to lose weight, then of course you have to be eating at a caloric deficit. But if you're already skinny or trying to build muscle, then you really have to make sure that you're getting enough calories and your essential nutrients. To fix that, then you can either extend your eating window by a few hours or simply adding an extra meal or, you know, eating more calories, whatever it is. It's important to also make sure that you stimulate the anabolic growth mechanisms that counterbalance the catabolic effects of fasting. Fasting is catabolic because autophagy and AMPK promote cellular turnover and cellular breakdown, which has to be balanced out with the anabolic growth processes of mTOR. Otherwise, you're gonna lose a lot of muscle and you're gonna go frail. That's where it has to be balanced out. Fasting is very great for longevity and uh, your general health because of the catabolic processes, but at the same time, you have to make sure that you get enough anabolism and growth that is going to actually allow you to live longer. And this is where you feast and make sure you get enough calories, especially protein and amino acids. Get on, fucked up now! You now know how to not mess up your intermittent fasting window. If you want to know how to master the art of intermittent fasting and feasting, then check out my program Keto IF. Thanks for watching. My name is Seem. Click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. Stay autophagic. Stay empowered.